Welcome to Unit 7, World History Students. Mr. Deegan here. Please get out your Unit 7 packet and turn to page 2 and 3 and 4. We'll be working with those pages today. And today, we start our study of World War I. The Great War, the war to end all wars. And we're going to be focusing on the causes of World War I, aka the Great War. One of the causes and the sparks involves this world leader from Austria-Hungary. And once World War I happens, it's a war in the trenches between the Allied powers and the Central powers. And the word of the lesson is tension, stressful pressure, awkwardness between groups. Tension is one of the root causes of World War I as well. Tension between powers over political power, over cultural misunderstandings, but tension is at the heart of the start of World War I. A guiding question for today, what factors caused World War I? On we go. What was the impact of World War I? World War I was caused by competition among industrial nations in Europe. Remember, we have just experienced the Industrial Revolution. And a failure of diplomacy. The war transformed European and American life, wrecked the economies of Europe, and it planted the seeds for a second world war. You see a picture here with all of the world powers, especially the European powers, pointing at each other. You're to blame, you're to blame, you're to blame. That is not a recipe for success. Let's look at the overview of World War I. When did it happen? It started in 1914 and ended in 1918. And what was the significance of World War I? It was the first global war, and there were more than 30 million casualties associated with World War I. Why? Because of modern technology. Tanks and machine guns and airplanes were used for the first time, which resulted in this high casualty count. What were the main causes of World War I? What were the four major causes? We use M-A-I-N to break it down. Militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. We're going to explore all four of these in more depth right now. M is for militarism. It is defined as the policy of building up a country's military your weapons, your troop training, etc. And militarism involved European countries with strong militaries who often wanted to use them. And you see some examples here of militarism, an early version of the tank, and you see chemical weapons being used. These are gas masks on soldiers. And what is an example of militarism in the early 1900s? You have the arms race. Countries were trying to arm themselves the best they could with tanks and gas and machine guns and planes. You also had the idea of conscription, which is a system of drafting citizens into a country's army. And lastly, you have naval competition between Great Britain, and Germany. This naval competition is going to lead to World War I. Give me an A for alliances. Alliances can be defined as when countries join together because of common beliefs and desires. And if one country is attacked, allies feel obligated to enter war to defend each other. And this political cartoon shows that. And I'm going to give you a more blown up version of it. Boop. So here's Serbia. Serbia says, if you touch me, I'll. Here is Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary says, if you make a move, I'll. Here's Russia. It says, if you hit that little feller, I'll. And then here's Germany. If you strike my friend, I'll. And then there's France and Britain in the background saying, if you hit him, ho there, if you chaps, so all this is to say alliances were 
important to the start of World War I. In the years before World War I, all of these alliances led to diplomatic failures. And after there was diplomatic failures, conflict resulted. The I is for imperialism, as we've seen in the previous lessons. The definition is competition among European countries to build the largest, richest empire. And Africa was a continent that was experiencing imperialism from European powers. They were dividing up the continent. And sometimes these divisions were not agreed upon by the European powers, which leads to conflict. And an example that we give, of course, is Africa and the fight for raw materials among European powers to earn profit and to feed the factories of the Industrial Revolution. The end for nationalism. Nationalism can be defined as a pride in one's country and motivation to build the most successful empire. And an example of nationalism in this time period, in the early 1900s, was when Austria-Hungary, which is here in red, annexes or adds Bosnia, which is this slice of land right here, to its empire, and Serbia, which is in green right here, and Bosnia, they both share a culture. And Serbia wants desperately to have Bosnia as a part of it. Austria-Hungary wants it conflict results. There's one spark for World War I, and it's an assassination. The assassination of this man, Franz Ferdinand, a leader of Austria-Hungary, sparked the start of World War I. Franz Ferdinand, and there's Austria-Hungary once again. Who was this man, Franz Ferdinand? His title was the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. What was Austria-Hungary anyway? It was the third largest country in Europe in 1914. There were six different religions and 15 different languages within this empire. And it was hard to unite. It was hard for a leader to get all of these religions and languages and cultures to see eye to eye. Were there enemies of Austria-Hungary? You bet. Serbia and Bosnia wanted to form their own country because they shared similar cultures. Who killed Franz Ferdinand? This man pulled the trigger. His name is Gavrilo Princip. He's from Serbia, and he is a member of the Black Hand terrorist group. He is one of seven who planned the assassination in Sarajevo. And they armed themselves with pistols, grenades, and a chemical called cyanide that could poison. And here is a sketch of Gavrilo Princip shooting Ferdinand and his wife Sophie on June 18th, 1914. Both leaders died. And here's a picture of them in their open caskets. And what happened after the assassination? Number one, Austria-Hungary officials demanded that Serbia allow them to punish the Black Hand terrorists. Serbia refuses and Gavrilo Princip, he gets 20 years in jail. After Serbia shuts out Austria-Hungary, that feeds even more tension. And Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia on July 28, 1914. What happens after this? Countries start to take sides. Germany gives a blank check of support to Austria-Hungary. Russia then supports Serbia, and everyone starts falling in line as to one of two sides that wars. And the sides are as follows. And if you can turn to your map on page four, please label these countries and then make a key so that you know the difference between the Allied powers and the Central powers in World War I. And when you're done with that map, we are almost done. You have your summary questions remaining. Please fill those out so you can get a 30 out of 30. And we are done for today. Until next time, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.